Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, we want to take the next hour and go inside the issues, looking beyond for a moment just the day's breaking news. There's a lot of it. But instead, some of the, assess some of the bigger issues that are coming to define our life in this country. We're going to open tonight with another look at what has been this year's biggest story, immigration. Without much real public debate or even discussion, the elite left has reached a conclusion on the question, and it's that America needs more immigration, much more immigration without limit. And we shouldn't worry about whether the people coming here have skills that we need, whether they're educated, whether they can speak English even, or even whether they're violent criminals. In fact, we shouldn't even try to accurately count how many are coming here or how many live within our borders. Do you disagree with that? Well, then, in the words of one MSNBC commentator, you're pure evil. Watch. Donald Trump, without a doubt, is pure evil. No other country in the Americas has walls. No other country in the world separates children from their parents. Pure evil. The thing about pure evil is you can't reason with it. You can't negotiate with pure evil or reach some kind of compromise with pure evil. Pure evil can only be destroyed by force. Given that, it's not surprising that the left is now mobilizing to harass, fire, and if necessary, physically attack anyone who disagrees with them on immigration because the other side is, again, pure evil. For example, after chasing DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen out of a restaurant earlier this week in downtown Washington, activists now showed up at her home. But zoom out for a moment. Why exactly does America need more immigration? Everybody says it does, but do we really? Does more immigration help ordinary Americans? Does it improve the country? Or does it just enrich an elite class, the policymaking class, at the expense of everyone else? Very few people are asking that question, but one who is, is Michael Anton. He just wrote a piece in the Washington Post asking, why do we need more people in this country anyway? We thought that was a good question. So we're kicking off tonight's special with Michael Anton. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tucker. I'm very glad to be here. Well, I was grateful that you pulled back a little bit and asked the macro question that undergirds all of this. Do we really need a flow of more than a million new people into America every year? What was your conclusion? Well, my conclusion is let's look at the answers that people give for why and examine them. And they don't really bear close examination. So reason number one tends to be we need them for the... For, we need workers. We have all these jobs. We need workers. And that sounds kind of plausible when we have a low unemployment rate for the first time in a long time. But remember, that low unemployment rate is an achievement of the Trump economy coming after 20 years of wage stagnation and even wage declines for working in middle class Americans. So I remember the 90s when the Clinton administration was seeking tight labor markets and their argument was well, if we have tight labor markets, wages are going to go up for the core Democratic constituencies, working people. Democrats don't care about that anymore because right. they're not the po the party of labor anymore. They're the party of oligarchs, essentially, and they like more immigrants because they want to push wages down. So the jobs argument doesn't really hold up. Uh, another argument is people will say, well, we need more immigrants because of declining birth rates and in particular to fix Social Security or our entitlements. That doesn't really hold up because exactly. by that logic, you'd have to say, you know, Workers will always have to outnumber retirees, which means population growth forever, which means what's the upper limit on the U.S. population? We're now at over 300 million, 320, 330 million, 500 million, a billion. They don't want to answer that question. They just want to say, no, we have to keep doing what we're doing. No, no examination possible. Uh, it's, it's really kind of crazy, honestly, Wait, that so we can't let, have let this me just pause. Let me pause you there. So when people say that we need more immigrants to float our social safety net, what they're really saying is our social safety net is a Ponzi scheme and that the people at the end of it are yeah. going to get shafted, right? Of it's course. not sustainable well, without an endless flow of poor people. In 1967, a Nobel Prize winning economist who had not yet won the Nobel Prize but would later and explicitly called Social Security a Ponzi scheme and he meant it as a compliment because his assumption, this is the, you know, the mid-60s with a booming economy and a growing population, he said the, you know, the greatest Ponzi scheme ever devised is a growing country. So the, the assumption is the country's just going to grow forever. That, in, that includes population. I don't know about you, but I find a lot of parts of the country are pretty crowded as it is. Traffic's really bad. Uh, housing prices are right. very high. Why do we want to make it more crowded, uh, housing prices more expensive, school systems more stressed? I never hear a very good or convincing answer to that. Well, I don't hear the argument actually at all. I don't hear an argument about immigration. What I hear, and you pointed this out, I thought, yeah, really well in your piece, 
I hear not a policy debate, but a religious argument. If you're for the side that I'm taking, you're a good person. If you're against it, you're a bad person or pure evil, as they say on MSNBC. Right. I, I think people, they also, they try to make the point that America has been welcoming in the past. Um, in, Previous waves of immigration have served America well, and there's a lot of truth to that. There was a time when America yes. made humongous acquisitions of land, and uh, the, our political leaders in the past thought that they needed more people to help go settle and farm that land. That made sense. There was a time during the Industrial Revolution when factories were booming and business was expanding at a rate that exceeded the uh, ability of the present population to fill those jobs, yes. and we welcomed a lot of immigrants in, in the uh, late 19th and early 20th centuries. There's a rationale for that at those times. What's the rationale now? Those two filling up the land, that, that doesn't hold anymore. Right. Uh, the frontier was declared closed by the federal government in the late 1800s. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, wh so, where do we... Wh but you're, I mean, I think you're, you're asking the most basic question that nobody asks, and I'm really glad that you did, and I hope that your piece today sets off a national conversation on the subject. Michael Anton, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thanks a lot.